All right. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the ONAV TechNAR. Uh, my name is Charles Chan, and I am the technical lead of SD Fabric Control Plan at ONAV. Uh, together with my counterpart, Carmelo Cascone, who is the technical lead of SD Fabric Data Plan, we're going to jointly present SD Fabric to you today. Um, so, just quickly setting the context, there is a broad agreement now that we are moving towards to a distributed cloud architecture. Uh, we're in an era of everybody adopting hyperscale clouds, but the cloud is moving towards the edge. And we're seeing different forms of edges, like the telco edge and enterprise edge shown here. Uh, hyperscale clouds, uh, despite being extremely flexible and offering huge capacity, are typically challenged for higher latency and expensive bandwidth. Uh, edge cloud, on the other hand, uh, offers benefits such as lower latency with a much smaller scale at much lower cost. Uh, another industry trend is that 5G is now becoming the last mile link to the uh, end device. And the challenge we've seen, uh, we've been facing here is uh, the ability to connect these explosion number of devices showing on the left hand side uh, to the various cloud resources on the right. And uh, there are different forms of uh, compute and networking resources of different sizes inside each of these clouds, but there are lots of common requirements and challenges across these data centers. Uh, now let's take a look at a few example use cases. So the first one is multi-cloud application. Uh, multi-cloud application is not only about deciding which cloud the application is gonna be deployed on. Uh, it's also about hosting applications with uh, modern design principles such as microservices and distributed workflow, uh, depending on available resources and how much benefit they can get from being close to the user. Uh, in addition to that, we're seeing an ex explosive growth uh, in numbers of devices introduced by IoT use cases. And being able to handle that amount of devices somewhat becoming a challenge across the network. Uh, 5G connected device is uh, going to primarily driving the network requirement as we briefly mentioned. And last but not least, there is a clear desire to apply AI and machine learning to better manage the huge number of devices more efficiently and use AI ML to continuously improve online services. Uh, it really requires a huge amount of workload elastically being distributed across the hybrid cloud in order to support AI and machine learning. And there is a need to uh, run data collections and aggregation at the edge close to the source while uh, learning is done in a hyperscale cloud where compute resources are plentiful and cheaper. So uh, clear data centers need to be evolved to support these uh, emerging use cases. And we are seeing a couple of new characteristics and uh, requirements coming up. Uh, first thing is that the line between servers and networkings are now blurring. In order to uh, come back for the uh, stall in more flow, we need to build a solution in a more flexible and cohesive way that enhance, uh, you're seeing a notion here of viewing solution as a programmable cluster of computing uh, capacities. Uh, we're also, of course, moving towards a developer focused world. Uh, so all these need to be developer optimized. That means uh, deeply programmable and end to end and throughout each of the components. And uh, we must uh, be able to easily distribute the workload to various resources, including CPU, GPU, NIC, or switches. And all these needs to be accessible easily through a well-defined API. Uh, the data center need to be cloud managed, meaning that it has to be deployed, managed, and monitored by cloud platforms. It needs to provide easy access to gauges and dials for application visibility and control. Uh, we also now have to consider network traffic end-to-end, -end, including not only underlay switches, but also container network, software switches, and smart NIC on host. Uh, finally, all these components need to be centrally orchestrated. We believe doing so can bring a huge benefit in terms of having global visibility and being able to optimize. Um, so what is SD Fabric? Uh, so let's keep this at high level for a moment and uh, view SD Fabric as a black box for now. And this is the high level feature that, that uh, this black box has to offer. So the first one uh, is that SD Fabric is cloud managed uh, network fabric as a service with an initial focus on 5G cloud edge, edge cloud use cases. And it is integrated with an industry standard CICD logging monitoring alert system. Uh, so on the left-hand side, you can see that uh, there are uh, uh, access devices like the base stations attached to the fabric, 
And then we can also have uh, several rack of uh, compute nodes attached to the fabric. Uh, on those uh, compute nodes, you can uh, easily find uh, virtual switch, container networks, and, and smart NICs on those servers. Uh, on the right hand side, this fabric will uh, connect to the internet to provide internet access. And on top of it, uh, the SC fabric uh, open up an API such that the cloud platform and edge app developers can um, uh, do uh, control uh, and telemetry through this API. So the thing is, second thing I want to talk about is that this is uh, uh, the fabric is completely programmable throughout the stack from um, from the top to the bottom, and then it's visible throughout the network end to end. And all these uh, programmability and visibility are exposed uh, through uh, the uh, API we have here. Um, we kind of categorize that as two, two different types. The first one is the control API that uh, provides uh, features like uh, network slicing and QoS management, um, and also like uh, path selection. Um, uh, that means redirecting traffic to a specific uh, uh, switches and also um, access control that is uh, blocking uh, traffics. Um, and then we also have another set of API that's um, uh, regarding telemetry, meaning that the app, app developers can monitor queues, path, latency, and uh, packet drops through this API. Um, and I just want to mention that uh, this API is still growing and is very extensible. So uh, more features is coming out in the future. Um, uh, and then uh, we also have a tighter integration of servers and networks, uh, meaning that uh, we now want to extend our networks from not only the underlay, but further extend that to the end host, integrate that with uh, SmartNIC, FPGA, software switches, and CNI, and things like that. Um, and then uh, our uh, initial focus is uh, on the 5G workflow, as I mentioned, because of the explosion of uh, you know, 5G and IoT devices. Uh, we're going to focus on 5G use cases at the beginning. But uh, having said that, the SD fabric can um, actually be scaled and uh, fit into different uh, data center use cases. Um, last point is that uh, the entire SD fabric uh, is from the, from the view of the uh, other components. It's seen as a one big router and one big uh, uh, 5G user plan function. Um, so if you're familiar with BGP, that the entire SP fabric, although they, they have uh, several switches and, and devices in there, but from the BGP's perspective, it's just one, uh, one uh, BGP peer for the entire network. Um, all right, so uh, what would this stack look like to support this multi-cloud, um, multi-edge application? Um, so from the top, you can see uh, the app is um, accessing uh, the central operation and control through the application APIs. Uh, the API provide, uh, you know, operational portals and, and uh, ways to manage, and then also gauges to, um, uh, to monitor the, the uh, network uh, conditions. And then um, these centralized operational control is sitting in a public cloud, and these are all cloud managed. And then, um, on the Edge Cloud, we have uh, a set of fabric apps also exposing APIs to the, uh, to the central cloud man management and operation and control. Um, and those fabric apps are built on top of our SDN controller, which is a, a um, distributed SDN controller on us. And then um, we also, uh, but, but, um, below that, we also need a theme software on the switch side to, uh, to talk to the SDN control um, through you know, protocols like P4 runtime, GNMI, et cetera. And then finally, the lowest part of this uh, software stack is the programmable hardware itself. Okay, so these uh, four components are sitting uh, in, in the Edge Cloud. So this is uh, what a stack will look like. And this is what SD Fabric has to offer. Right? So on, on the top, we have the same thing. But here, for the centralized operation and control, we have um, integrated with uh, another uh, project called Ether. Um, I'll talk about that briefly later. But uh, in Ether, we have a, a component called runtime operation and control. And that would be our kind of sense, uh, centralized place for, for the operators and agile developers to, to access the fabric uh, through. And then um, on, on the fabric lab level, we have a set of SD fabric applications uh, providing you know, features like uh, bridging routing and more advanced features I'll talk about it later. Uh, on the SDN control level, we have a distributed uh, SDN controller called Honus. 
And on the switch side for the switch agent and switch software, we have Stratum, it support uh, communication to SDN controller. We have P4 runtime, GNMI and um, other protocols. And then on the programmable hardware side, we have um, P4 programmable switches. So uh, there are still a lot of things that are uh, still being working on. Um, so on the uh, programmable hardware side, we want to further support Nix and software switches. Um, and on the uh, thin software side, we want to um, uh, further have Sonic integration via PINS project. And then uh, on the fabric app side, we have um, a work going on for CNI optimizations and overlay support. Um, on the rock side, we want to further support multi-tenancy and also we want to extend that API for third-party edge app and, and developers. Um, so uh, in this page, I'm going to quickly explain what Ether is uh, in response to the hybrid edge cloud need. So as you can see here, this is the fabric. Um, Ether is, uh, can be viewed as two separate parts. The first part is the Ether connected edge, which is sitting in the edge cloud cl close to the customers. And the uh, connected edge is a distributed mobile uh, has a distributed mobile core user plan provide local breakout at all remote ether edges. And then uh, on the right hand side, you can see Ether Central. This is sitting in a public cloud, um, and it has a shared mobile core control plan in a central cloud just for the all the ether edges. And on the left hand side, of course, you can see access devices like base stations. Um, and we have several use cases that Ether uh, initially focus on, like IoT, you know, various sensors, surveillance, multimedia, um, employee network, and visitor network. These are all typical uh, enterprise uh, uh, enterprise edge use cases. Um, and then, um, so one of the services we build on top of um, SD Fabric on the edge side is we implement the SD Core uh, 5G Core user plan. And while the 5G core control plan is still sitting in a central cloud. Um, another thing is that we have the um, SD RAN, uh, near runtime rig, and CU and DU implemented and uh, being deployed on the edge as well. Um, there's uh, others uh, applications we can deploy on the edge, for example, like the IoT AI machine learning platforms, uh, like the data collector and aggregators can be deployed on the edge while we have the uh, uh, central IoT application is on the cloud in the central um, running the learning procedure. Um, and also there could be various uh, edge apps being run on the edge. Um, so um, and this page is showing the SD fabric uh, being deployed in the worldwide ether production networks. So as of today, we have um, a production network on-prem edge size, we have 11 of them. And then there are three more upcoming on-prem edge deployments. Uh, and then we have uh, three central managed and, and, and control cloud. Um, and these are, uh, Ether networks are, are still growing today. Um, so that's uh, some of a high level view about what uh, SD Fabric is and how it fits into Ether and edge cloud solutions. Uh, then uh, here's, um, for the rest of this uh, presentation, we're going to talk uh, more detail about SD Fabric. So this is the uh, agenda for the remaining session. So first, we're going to um, talk about the platform architecture, and then uh, walk you through some of the feature that's commonly found in traditional network fabric. Uh, we also want to talk about uh, some of the new features that's enabled by programmable data plan, uh, including uh, P4-based 5G UPF, slicing QoS and to invisibility and the possibility and opportunities of building network verification and close to control applications. And then finally, we're going to talk about how we uh, operationalize SD Fabric by uh, integrating it with uh, cloud native technologies, uh, including Kubernetes, deployment automation, logging, troubleshooting, et cetera. Um, and then finally, we're going to summarize that by uh, giving you an update on current status and roadmap and to show you how to get involved. So let's talk about platform details. Um, so here, um, let's start with the hardware equipment deploy at the edge. So we have a couple of people programmable switches, uh, x86 servers, uh, base stations, and uh, internet access. Right? The internet access serves as a local breakout, so the subscriber traffic doesn't have to travel all the way back to the core network through a long haul optical fiber. 
and therefore can enjoy various benefits such as low latency. Um, the very first design principle uh, we talk about is uh, the right size topology. So um, uh, here, our initial focus is to uh, provide the smallest HA setup of a pair leaf, pair of uh, top of rack switches. Uh, to uh, um, and we can also scale that to a full leaf spine uh, if the uh, edge actually grows in the future. Um, and these uh, also provide a dual homing for the servers uh, for additional redundancy. Um, the second, uh, the second thing is that uh, this design is uh, API driven, and we have a programmable API with the ability to drop rerouted traffic or uh, even uh, configure network slicing and QoS, obtain telemetries uh, of uh, the application workload across switches, uh, CPUs, and NICs. Um, as you can see here, um, we have uh, several applications, including Trellis, uh, UP4, which controls the 5G user plan, and also the INT, which offers inbound network telemetry. Um, and all of these are applications sitting on our SDN controller arms and talking to the switches through people runtime and GNMI. Um, and then we have um, uh, a cloud managed uh, um, platform. So as I mentioned, uh, these are uh, offered by Ether. We have a runtime operation control. And on top of that, the third party applications and enterprise portals can access the SD fabric API through the uh, runtime operation control. And this entire solution is fully integrated and configured by the Ether management platform. Um, then um, we have focus on 5G as the initial workload. Uh, um, we have several combinations of uh, 5G user plan function implementation. For example, we can have uh, Tofino switches plus best uh, software UPF. Um, uh, so, so uh, we can have uh, um, you know latency sensitive or mission critical uh, traffic using uh, supported by Tofino, while uh, the best provides uh, you know scalable UPF on demand for best effort traffic. Um, it's very similar. We can also have the combination of SmartNIC uh, UPF plus best UPF extension. Uh, and uh, we build this solution with the 5G slicing as the primary construct, meaning that everything, every operation that's done is, uh, you know, within a, a given slice, and then all the QoS uh, traffic management stuff are also done within a slice. Um, then we have uh, uh, provide visibilities through uh, inbound network telemetry. So uh, as you can see, we have uh, several uh, collectors here uh, for fiber measurement, and that could be further integrated with uh, uh, Intel Deep Insight. And those uh, measurement and mattress information can be fed back into the uh, closed-loop control uh, application, such that we can adjust uh, the system behavior according to our measurement of the current uh, network condition. Um, and finally, we have an integration with Kubernetes uh, CNI uh, and overlays that enables the true end-to-end -end programmability and visibility throughout the network. Um, so next, I'm going to talk about uh, just quickly walk through several features that we uh, can found in traditional fabric. So the basic uh, bridging for L2, bridging for the at the, the top of rack switch. Uh, ECMP routing, the L3 routing across the fabric, um, IPv4 and v6 unicast and multicast, and uh, dual homing, and that uh, you know handles link failure. If uh, one of the NIC on the host fail uh, or one of these switch fail, we actually have been able to uh, reroute the traffic through the pair link. Uh, also DHCP relay. Uh, and also ACL to drop or redirect traffic. These are all very common features you can find in any, basic any traditional network fabric. And um, we also support different uh, deployment of different scale and uh, redundancy uh, at different scale. So the, the smallest setup is the single switch setup uh, on the top left corner, which is basically offer no redundancy uh, at, a, at a lowest cost. Right, and then uh, people may want to grow that into uh, a single leaf pair, which is also our initial focus topology. This one will give you 
some basic high availability um, uh, between the leaf switches and, and servers. And then of course, if you need to grow um, to support um, uh, larger capacities and also you want to get more redundancy, you always have the opportunities to, to actually set up a, a full leaf spine fabric with your home uh, uh, leaf pairs. And this uh, complete setup will offer you redundancy over leaves, spines, links, and hosts. Right, so on the, on the right hand side, you can see this is like the, the maximum redundancy you can get if you have this kind of a setup. Basically, we use uh, ECMP groups uh, to handle link failure and switch failure. We also have uh, you know, pair, pair leaves between the, the uh, Tor switch to handle local failures between uh, um, in, in, in inside this rack. And then we also have uh, dual home servers uh, using linear spawning interface to handle uh, uh, NIC failures, and we also support multiple external routers. So uh, that's about the uh, kind of the traditional uh, things you can uh, features you can find in almost every network fabric in the market. But now um, I will actually hand uh, over to Carmelo to talk about some of the innovative features that's um, enabled in SD fabric by introducing programmable data plan. So Carmelo. Yeah, thanks, Charles. I guess you can see my screen. Um, okay, so as Charles was saying, one of the uh, main differences between SD Fabric and traditional Fabric is that we leverage a fully programmable data plane end to end. And what do I mean by that is that we um, we are able to program uh, all the ops that uh, are in a in a packet path uh, from uh, switches, smart mix uh, down to the uh, host networking stack. And uh, this allows us to provide uh, capabilities uh, beyond traditional fabrics. So for example, um, today we use P4 uh, to program the switch, and we have a plan to use P4 as well to program SmartMix. And the idea is to provide capabilities beyond uh, layer two and layer three for warding in the switch, like what Charles was, you know, mentioned before, and capabilities beyond you know, what usually a SmartNIC does, like host uh, networking stock offloading. Um, so in the, in, the, in the next slides, I will talk um, uh, more in details about uh, how we implement a 5G UPF, how do we support in-band network telemetry, uh, slicing in QS, as well as anomaly detection and fine grain uh, measurements. But we don't, um, you know, we don't stop at the hardware level. The idea here is to push programmability um, up to the uh, host networking stack. And so in SD Fabric, we also look at uh, technologies like eBPF that allows us to insert programmable hooks in the Linux kernel. And uh, today we do this to extend the INT visibility as close as possible uh, to, to containers running on, on Kubernetes, as well as to do some early um, uh, classifications of traffic for, uh, for slicing in QS. Uh, okay, so let me, let me talk a little bit more in details about uh, these this new features. So uh, when it comes to the UPF, the idea is very simple. Uh, instead of like running a software-based UPF uh, in the servers, uh, the idea is that we can program the switch uh, uh, ASIC, in this case, Intel Tofino, to perform exactly the same uh, functionalities, but at hardware speeds. So the idea here is to uh, free up uh, CPU resources and have them dedicated to uh, application, while at the same time being able to offer a, a high performance UPF that can meet the 5G requirements for uh, ultra low latency and jitter, as well as high throughput. So we're talking about the terabit scale uh, uh, UPF. Uh, the type of capabilities we implement today are, um, you know, we don't have a spec compliant uh, uh, UPF, or at least the, the UPF is spec compliant, but it's not a full blown UPF that implements, you know, all possible features you can find in a UPF. Instead, uh, our implementation is uh, tailored for enterprise and IoT use cases. So we provide a minimal pipeline that works well for those use cases. So from the basic things like GDPU uh, termination uh, to um, uh, you know, slicing in QS, uh, as well as uh, usage reporting and uh, idle mode uh, buffering. Actually, the last one is not something we implement inside the switch, but we provide as a, as a cloud native service. So it's an application that runs um, uh, on the server. Um, we um, used a, a distributed implementation. So the idea is that uh, if we scale the topology from a single switch to multiple switches, it's not just one switch that performs the UPF uh, functionality, but instead we replicate the UPF st state on all uh, lift switches. And um, 
we do this for uh, mainly redundancy and uh, HA, and also to further reduce latency. So the idea is that uh, as soon as a GTP packet or you know, uplink packet or downlink packet enters the fabric, the first loop switch would be able to uh, do uh, encapsulation or decapsulation. Uh, the other benefit of you know, this distributed implementation is that we can apply the slicing and classification rules as soon as packets enter the fabric. And so we can enforce those slicing and QoS rules uh, end to end uh, through leaf switches and spine switches uh, as well. Uh, finally, because we want to be able to run uh, applications with strict uh, SLA requirements, think about you know, industrial automation where you know, delay has to be you know, very short or you know, we cannot tolerate packet drops. Uh, application developers require a way to validate those SLAs. And so that's why we have integrated support for INT with the UPF functionality. So the switches in this case are able to, are programmed to be able to monitor the flows inside GTPU tunnels and be able to uh, report anomalies, again, like the drops, high latency, et cetera. And I will talk more in details about INT in the next slides. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I mentioned network slicing in QS uh, a few times, so let me explain what do I mean by that. Um, slicing is a, is, a, is a concept that became prominent with 5G, uh, and so we, you know, that's why we support it in, in SD Fabric, but we also support slicing and, and QS for non-5G workloads. But in the 5G context, um, the idea behind slicing is that we have a shared physical in infrastructure that comprises the radio access network, the fabric, uh, in our case, including NICs and the host networking stack, as well as compute resources and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and the internet gateway. So the, the idea of slicing is that of being able to partition this physical infrastructure in independent and secure logical network, where each network can target different services. In this example, we have three slices, one to, um, uh, you know, forward traffic for security cameras, one, uh, for the uh, you know, employees and one for visitors. Each one of this uh, slice has different QS requirements. So the idea in SD Fabric is to expose APIs to provide the maximum flexibility to edge up developers. So depending on the requirement, edge up developers should be able to create a slice, but then as well configure uh, QS in a flexible way inside each slice. So the idea is that slices can have different traffic classes and a job developer should be able to map traffic to different classes and apply prioritization or uh, things like uh, bandwidth allocation. So how do, we, uh, how do we implement that at a very high level? Uh, well, again, the idea is to, you know, to do this end to end. So what we did is um, we, uh, or at least what we're doing is we are uh, making uh, both switches and host uh, slicing and QoS aware by uh, actually enforcing uh, isolation QoS at, again, each hop of the network. Uh, so for switches, um, the idea is very simple. We leverage uh, Tofino capabilities for traffic manager management. Things, think about you know, scheduling, you know, queues, meters, to be able to provide prioritization of traffic and bandwidth allocation. And we can do this by um, leveraging the you know, classification rules that come from the 5G core control plane. So we support the you know, type of slicing in QoS um, that um, you know, rules that you know, can, can be provided by the 5G core control plane, but we also support the same for you know, non-5G traffic. And, and that's what I mean by uh, echo light uh, match in this, in this slide. Uh, so the idea is that as soon as we classify traffic, then you know, um, we know what is uh, the slice that a given packet belongs to and the traffic class, then uh, we can use shared or dedicated queues for the different traffic classes. Uh, shared or dedicated, the idea here is to essentially leave um, the choice to developers, uh, whether they need you know, stricter you know, uh, isolation or they have you know, loser requirements. And so the idea is that they can either rent a dedicated queue or share a queue with you know, some other slice. Uh, in terms of like traffic classes supported today, uh, we try to cover the spectrum between latency sensitive application and throughput intensive application. So we, uh, we have support for control traffic, uh, think about uh, you know, industrial automation, um, or 
you know, consensus protocols uh, required by, you know, some applications running uh, in, the, in the server. So the idea is to provide the lowest latency possible for those applications. Then we have real-time traffic, uh, think about voice and videos, all those traffic that requires low latency, but, uh, you know, medium to high uh, bit rate. And finally, we have support for elastic traffic. The idea here is to provide some uh, bandwidth uh, guarantees uh, for you know, TCP-like throughput intensive um, application. Um, so this, um, at the switch level, at the host level, we do something very similar. So we have a similar pipeline. Um, we leverage eBPF to do, um, the plan is to leverage eBPF to do some early classification of traffic as it comes out of uh, containers and then uh, leverage as, mass as much as possible hardware-based uh, QoS support in the NIC. So think about uh, data center bridging, so DBC for uh, regular NICs or you know, more advanced QoS support provided, uh, provided by smart NICs. Okay, so that was about uh, slicing in QS. Now talking about visibility. Um, visibility seems to be a you know, key requirement of you know, almost any fabric product out there. And the reason it's very simple, this is a complex network with you know, um, you know, many different uh, capabilities. And there's a number of things that could, could go wrong. A packet might be dropped because of a misconfiguration or you know, they could be delayed because of congestion. And you know, for, you know, we want to provide SLAs uh, to, to developers, we need a way to validate those SLAs and so monitor traffic. So that's why we, we have implemented support for uh, the in-band network telemetry standard. And again, we do this end-to-end. -end. So we have uh, instrumented both switches and hostess with INT uh, report generation capabilities. Um, as well as uh, you know, anomaly detection. So the idea is to generate reports only for those packets that are relevant. So instead of like generating INT reports for every single packet, we monitor things like uh, latency or the ingress port, egress port, uh, queue congestion levels, and decide when to generate reports or not uh, to avoid overloading the collector. Um, the, I mean, I, I, INT was initially introduced as a way to provide visibility for switches, but we have decided to extend this all the way into the host. And again, the idea is to be able to monitor packets uh, also inside the host networking stack that provides uh, quite a complex pipeline. So there are multiple dropping points. You know, there's a number of things that could, wrong, could go wrong inside the host networking stack. Um, what I'm showing in this example is uh, the, the, the path that uh, you know, uh, you know, can be taken by, for example, a 5G connected device trying to talk with an application running on the servers. Think about a about, you know, simple web server, for example. Uh, assuming we're using a Kubernetes uh, node port to load balancer, we could have packets you know, enter from the first leaf, it, the uh, node port to load balancer, and then being redir redirected to the actual uh, destination pod using overlay panels. So the implementation we have today um, is able to, um, so on the switches, generate reports for both uh, overlay and underlay packets. And actually uh, we make sure to, um, to um, generate INT reports in a way that the INT collector is then able to correlate overlay uh, tunnels and underlay traffic. And we do the same on the, on, on the host. Uh, so today we're working on a, on a, um, um, uh, eBPF-based uh, Kubernetes CNI, actually an extension of the popular eBPF-based uh, Kubernetes CNI to be able to generate uh, these INT reports. Um, uh, we have uh, integration with uh, Intel Deep Insight, which is a commercial analytics platform, but uh, in principle, any, any collector that supports the INT standard could work with, with SD Fabric. Uh, so the idea is that once we collect all the reports of the uh, collector, then we can expose APIs to the runtime operation control or directly to the app developers to be able to query things like uh, flow stats. Uh, for example, what is the path of a given flow? What is the end-to-end -end latency? Are there drops and what's the reason? Uh, get uh, switch stats. Uh, for example, if there's queue congestion, find out exactly which flow is creating congestion, et cetera. As well as, as, as you know, being able to support um, streaming of anomalies for, uh, for um, generating alarms. Okay, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, the fact that uh, uh, adding a programmable data plane means that SD Fabric is, uh, is, is a good target for research. And as a matter of fact, um, last year, ONF, together with uh, Cornell, Princeton, and Stanford universities, 
uh, we have started a project called Pronto to where the goal is to um, secure you know, 5G networks. And we do so by uh, researching and experimenting with novel ideas around you know, programmable data plane and closed loop control. Uh, what uh, this slide is showing is one of the Pronto deployments at the Stanford Flight Lab. In this case, we have uh, Ether and uh, SD Fabric as part of Ether providing connectivity to a uh, bunch of cameras here on the left um, connected um, you know, with wires to the fabric, as well as uh, drones uh, equipped with uh, 4G CBR, CBRS dongles, so communicating with the base, base station. Uh, so the idea is that we have uh, cameras observing the drones uh, flying around uh, in a room. Uh, the cameras stream, uh, you know, this uh, video signal to a motion capture uh, software running on the server that then fits some data to a command control uh, module that then sends uh, position commands um, to the drones. And so by doing so, the drones are able to uh, move around uh, in you know, complex formations and execute different strategies. So the idea is that uh, SD Fabric as a, as a you know, fabric platform providing connectivity by being pro programmable, uh, you know, we, we can leverage this programmability to uh, be able to, for example, make this more secure and be able to detect and mitigate attacks. And so what we have uh, demonstrated recently is that we can uh, modify the switch pipeline. So we can modify the P4 program that runs on the switch. Uh, actually, some uh, researchers from, again, Cornell, Princeton, and Stanford were able to modify this P4 program, add uh, support for uh, detecting uh, um, you know, very fine paths, detecting DOS attacks directly in the data plane, as well as uh, uh, provide some new honest application that implement uh, some closed loop control um, logic and you know by doing so uh, we were able to demonstrate um, new ways to detect and uh, and mitigate those attacks. Uh, we have actually produced some uh, some you know very exciting demos that in the interest of time I'll not be able to show today, but uh, I will encourage everyone to uh, go check them out on the website. Again, these demos are about showing you know you know the, the actually the drones flying and then you know seeing the effects of different kinds of attacks and now by using uh, data plane programmability together with network verification and closed loop control, how we can actually uh, mitigate. Uh, those attack in uh, automated fashion. All right, so um, this is pretty much it in terms of uh, you know new data plane features that SD Fabric brings in. So now the question is, how do we um, how do we operate uh, such a network? And I'll let uh, Charles uh, talk about that. All right, thank you, Pamela. Um... So hopefully you guys can see my screen now. Um, so uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the uh, Kubernetes integration. So um, in the SD Fabric uh, design, we actually have several Topino switches provisioned as Kubernetes work in them. And what that means is that um, on top of the uh, open networking Linux operating system, we actually run Dockers and Kubernetes on it. And also uh, we deploy our switch agent, Stratum, as a Kubernetes service, as well as uh, some logging exporters and match exporters on, on top of it. And then uh, these uh, in this setup, all the configurations like chassis config is uh, pushed automatically uh, by the, uh, uh, the our ham chart. And also uh, by doing this, it will allow us to enjoy all the benefits provided by Kubernetes and cloud native uh, technologies like resource management, failure detection and recovery, monitoring, alarm and logging integration and deployment automation and, and many others, right? So um, let's first talk about deployment automation. So the way we deploy SD Fabric today is that we have uh, a Git repository of uh, pod configuration defining the parameters of each um, edge sites. And then once we detect any changes committed to that uh, Git repository, it will actually trigger um, uh, some pre-merge checks uh, and uh, when someone submits a review to it. And then when there is a merge happening, it will trigger the deployment job automatically. And that's uh, being implemented by Jenkins and Terraform and a, a lot of common uh, um, industry uh, standard tools. Um, that deployment process is going to take 
uh, several uh, resources, for example, that includes a Docker image uh, created as a result of the SV Fabric build process. And that Docker image in include not only uh, Honest, but also uh, the applications like the uh, Fabric Control, um, the UP4 and the INT apps are all packaged together in that Docker image. And then it will also take uh, a ham chart uh, from, uh, to deploy those Docker image. Um, and then uh, those deployment will get uh, to different uh, size and, and, um, and setups, right? So the first uh, side that hits is the development side and the QA side uh, on which we actually run system integration tests across, uh, uh, you know, and do the end-to-end -end testing. And then once that uh, pass the end-to-end -end testing and get verified, we promote that uh, to a staging pod that has uh, uh, different topologies. It could be two by two, lead spy. It could be also lead pair topology. And we run further uh, system integration tests with other components like 5G core um, and uh, and the radio access uh, network. And then once that pass all, all that staging testing, we then further uh, promote that uh, image to our production side. Uh, which is also, uh, it may be running two by two or other setup, but um, that's how our uh, kind of QA workflow um, goes. And all these are um, done uh, in within two minutes. Uh, these uh, deployment job will finish in two minutes and then it's just within one click of the Jenkins uh, uh, job. Uh, and it also, um, the SD fabric has also been uh, well integrated into ether and can, uh, that therefore easily fit into other edge solutions as well. Um, the next thing I want to show you is the monitoring dashboard. This is what we have today and it's still growing rapidly. So we build our monitoring dashboard using, uh, again, industrial standard of you know, Grafana, P Prometheus and Telegraph. Those are a very common tool that uh, tool people use in, in cloud native world. Uh, so here you can see that we have a charts, monitors, honest readiness, uh, topology changes, for example, if we have a link going down, you're going to see that over here. Uh, we have port counters uh, from the switches. We have ping latency and loss, uh, continuous monitoring uh, networking, uh, network connectivities across uh, containers and, and servers and internet. And also uh, we have, uh, you know, log counters and uh, log details down below. And that is very useful because when we see a, a traffic disruption or downtime, uh, some, somewhere here, we can actually uh, kind of map to what's the uh, log actually being produced by that time, and we can easily correlate those um, and, and figure out what, what's actually happening. Um, and then another thing uh, is logging integrations. We stream all our logs, including Honest logs and, and Stratum logs and all the application logs to the um, EFK stack, which is uh, Elastic, uh, Flow Embed, and Kibana. And that provides us a single place to look at for all logs and from multiple devices and multiple components. Uh, it also, uh, we also support fully customized log filters and, uh, and search parameters. And we implemented our custom log parser for Honest and Stratum for um, better log resolution. And then uh, since we now stream all the logs to, to a central place and then we have all the monitoring uh, platform integrated, we can now create alerts based on uh, centrally collected uh, informations, right? So uh, right now we have uh, two types of alert. The first one I, I, uh, is the critical alert, which is triggered by uh, traffic disruption. So when we, uh, we continuously monitor on the network connectivity, and when there is a traffic disruption, it will trigger this critical alert. And then another type of alert is more preventive. Uh, it's generated by, you know, when we see a, an error log, or when we see a topology changes or honest instance failure, uh, these kind of events uh, doesn't necessarily mean uh, we're going to have network uh, disruption or any, any issues because of all the HA redundancy we built into SD Fabric, but it's just something nice to, you know, uh, as, as a preventive uh, action can be taken by the operator to, to just double check if there's anything going on uh, that need to be uh, fixed before the, um, subscriber actually notice any traffic disruption. So uh, we have several monitors being set up as of today. Uh, we monitor on error logs coming from both Honest and Stratum. We also monitor on any topology changes. So we get some early notification when there's a link uh, going down or, or a switch going down. 
Um, and this is just one example of those alerts we have on our Slack channel. Um, when there is a error log showing up in, in on us, it, it will actually trigger um, a Slack message and, um, and our ops team will be notified. So uh, to summarize, uh, so SD Fabric uh, is a cloud managed network fabric as a service. Uh, it integrated, uh, it's integrated with Kubernetes and optimized for CNIs and overlay, and it's also managed by Ether, or it can be managed by other edge cloud solutions as well. Um, it is uh, API driven, it's deeply programmable end to end, and we created an API for third party edge applications and enterprise managers to access. And we also build a platform for P4 developers to implement innovative services like UPF and IoT Carmelo just introduced. And uh, we also have tighter integration of servers and networks uh, and workload can potentially be distributed onto various targets, including CPU, FPGA, SmartNIC, or Switch. Uh, and we, our initial focus is on 5G workflow. Uh, so we implemented 5G UPF on Tofino switches and uh, we build in network slices and QoS in SD Fabric. Um, and uh, here is just some current status and roadmap regarding all the features we talked about. Uh, the first one is the 5G user plan function. Uh, so as of today, we have distributed UPF uh, implementing on all of the leaf switches, abstracted as one big UPF. And we plan to support hybrid elastic UPF uh, and implemented by BAS or SmartNX. Uh, regarding slicing and QoS, we have the control and data plan design complete. We're implementing a sizing QoS on switches. Uh, and we also plan to, later this year, we plan to integrate that with EtherRock and um, provide an API for Agile developers to configure and manage those slices. Um, regarding IMT visibility, uh, we have uh, switches support for flows, drop, and queue reports uh, with uh, intelligent triggers. Uh, we also support, uh, have a POC implemented for INT host reporters based on Catacol eBPF CNO. And uh, uh, later this year, we also plan to do uh, uh, own, uh, host uh, INT support for both Calico eBPF and CLM CNO. And we also want to do SLA validation via a multi-component correlation. Uh, regarding scale and performance, right now we have tested uh, 1000 UE and 10 operations per second. But by the end of this year, we, we want to uh, support 10,000 UEs and one, 100 ops per second. And we want to be able to recover all the uh, 95 percentile of the failure uh, under 50 millisecond end to end. Regarding testing, we have a basic integration test running on hardware environment with a two by two topology. And we plan to uh, complete the test cases for leaf pair topology and also uh, complete more test cases uh, for the rest of this year. Uh, on the operation side of the thing, we have connectivity log topology based alert uh, being built. And um, in, in the future, we also want to have uh, all the fabric services and UPF services monitored by Ether. And we want to also trigger um, alerts if there is an SLA viol violation. Uh, and we also want to build troubleshooting tools that help developers to uh, figure out uh, when there is an issue. So uh, that's all about SD Fabric. And um, there are several ways that uh, people can get involved. So for the Edge Cloud ecosystem, we provide a production ready fabric for Edge Cloud solutions. So if you are a system integrator, solution provider, or enterprises, you can now start building your own solutions based on SD Fabric. Uh, if you are an OEM, white box vendor, or silicon vendors, you can start porting SD Fabric to your system in silicon. Um, if you're developers, you also get a, a perfect platform to, to develop your Edge app. Uh, so you can help uh, building an end-to-end -end fabric with the virtual switch programmable links on Variety Silicon. You can also build network aware and people power Edge cloud applications. If you're researchers, we offer you a great platform for uh, an open source platform for uh, your experimental research, uh, because this platform is deeply programmable at, and uh, it, it come with fine grain measurement, close to control and verification. So those are uh, things that um, you can build on top of this platform. Uh, we also, uh, you can also build network functions with people programmable data plan and also, uh, uh, or uh, full stack solutions to enable and create applications and use cases. So, uh, we have, we plan to have our first uh, release by the end of September. 
Uh, and ST Fabric uh, is currently in the incubation phase. Uh, we have some uh, uh, basic uh, configuration running on virtual switches that's already open source, but uh, the configuration that can be run on a P4 device hardware switches are now uh, uh, ONF member only access. And it will be ultimately be fully released as a, a Apache 2.0 open source license. Um, but it will historically take about uh, more than 12 months with typical projects. So uh, uh, thank you for uh, coming to this uh, Technar. And you can learn more uh, about SD Fabric at our website, uh, openarching.org slash SD Fabric. Uh, you can also uh, register to uh, receive our email notification and, and further announcement when we have those first readings. Uh, thank you. All right, um, so I think um, we can uh, do some Q and A's. We have about uh, eight minutes left. So I'll just do it from, uh, from the top um, and hopefully we can get all of them covered. But if not, um, we'll follow up with you offline. Uh, first question is, uh, will this be a distributed fabric? Uh, it really depends on what you mean by distributed. Um, if you're talking about a fabric being distributed in geographical locations, and yes, uh, as the fabric do support that scenario, actually, um, we have a previous use case in a telco edge that uh, we have the man fabric sitting in the uh, central office, while some of the smaller fabrics sitting in the field office close to the, uh, to the subscriber. Um, so I hope that answers the question. And then another question come up about uh, do SD Fabric API abstract away the specific of the stack, like um, for example, implementation hiding implementation details such as on us in P4? Um, the answer is yes. The way we do our network slicing and QoS API is uh, we have come up with those ideas coming from the 5G standard, right? So, so those are completely abstracted from the implementation. And also the way we do uh, traffic redirecting and uh, ACL are just you know standard five topple match, uh, so that has also nothing to do with the implementation. Uh, next question is um, how are edge app developer going to manage network and, and QoS? So uh, there are several uh, APIs we expose. Um, there are some uh, we consider it as a privileged API that allows um, manager uh, managers to create network slices and create new traffic classes. And then uh, there are some less privileged API allow edge app developers to associate their traffic, uh, sorry, associate their applications with certain uh, traffic classes. And, and then uh, that's how um, uh, a traffic can be identified and classified at um, our switches and uh, those queues and go as uh, policies will be enforced. Um, next question is Again. about a GTPU termination. I, I'll leave it to Carmelo. Carmelo, do you want to take yeah. this one? Yeah, I, so the question is the current non-compliant GTPU termination in the data plane, is this a limitation of the language? Well, I think I have to clarify what I said before. Um, we do have a 3GPP compliant UPF, but we don't you know, implement all possible features that are defined in the spec. And to be honest, I'm not aware of like all possible features. If you take the basic stuff, GTPU termination, um, usage reporting, idle mode buffering, um, I don't see any limitation in the language. Mo most of the processing that needs to be done in that case is, uh, you know, basic, um, you know, um, other modifications, uh, pretty much. Uh, when it comes to um, QoS, the specification is, um, you know, quite high level slash ambiguous on how QoS, you know, should be implemented. So there is a lot of flexibility. And right now, um, the implementation we put in place for Q UPF QS, uh, we believe is, is compliant uh, to the spec. Uh, one feature that is often mentioned as a limitation uh, of the language is idle mode buffering. So the idea of like buffering packets for a uh, potentially um, you know, infinite amount of time in the switch if a UE is in a power safe mode and needs to uh, uh, be uh, woken up. Uh, we don't think that's a limitation of the language. We don't think that feature should be implemented as part of the switch pipeline. And that's why what we did was to actually implement the uh, 
software service that uh, runs on, on Kubernetes. And so the idea that the switch can either send packets to the base station or steer them to this uh, um, essentially buffering, buffering service. Uh, so the, I guess the short answer is that uh, today we don't see any uh, limitation of the language that will prevent the implementation of a, of a UPF, at least for enterprise and IoT use cases. All right, thank you. Um, I think there is a, um, is there other questions? There are some uh, answer questions um, that might be worth repeating. Um, so when one question was, um, is the UPF part of the OMEC based solution by uh, ONF? Um, I will say in a, in a way, uh, I mean, the, the UPF we talked about today is part of SD Fabric. So again, the idea is to run the UPF function as part of the switch, but we do have integration with uh, OMEC and, uh, and actually uh, we do have integration with SD Core, which is the uh, 4G, 5G, uh, uh, mobile core solution from ONF that includes OMEC. So the idea is to, uh, so what, what we do today is we integrate the OMEC um, uh, core control plane. So the SPG to AC, if you're doing 4G or the SMF, if you're doing 5G. And we do have this integration using the, uh, the uh, PFCP uh, protocol. Um, other questions? One question is, uh, are the uh, QS and slicing features being implemented now um, in the context of SD Fabric or are they restricted to the UPF application only? Uh, the answer is uh, actually both. So the idea is to provide slicing QS uh, for, the U for the UPF, again, because this is a 5G requirements, but uh, we think there is value in providing the same slicing and QS capabilities also for non-5G traffic. So think about two applications running in two different servers, uh, you know, talking to each other. So being able to prioritize and provide some bandwidth allocation uh, between those applications, it's, it's something that we plan to support in ST Fabric. Um, I see another new question coming up about uh, OMEC is the uh, 4G core only, yes. And um, we're using another uh, set of core free 5GC for the 5G core uh, stack. Uh, we are at the top of the hour. Uh, I don't see any other question coming in. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.